On this episode, Christian is confused by math. 3 multiplied by 9, that's gonna be 27. He's also confused by language. Is it lives or lives? So he uses the awesome power of loops to overcome his shortcomings. This is kind of like the real power of um, programming. Hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. This is our tutorial where we are going to make a little shmup and it's going well. Um, so this is the current state of our little shmup. I'm gonna load the shmup and as always, uh, uh, download of the current file will always be down in doobly-doo for you guys to check out. This is what we have right now. We have a little ship, a little red ship, little blue flame and <laughs> gigantic, uh, gigantic bullets, bullets being shot. Now, generally, the uh, the goal of our tutorial right now is to f to kind of like work on the other parts of the shmup, which is you know you want to kind of shoot more than just one bullet that kind of feels bad, but also having enemies and and um, collision detection and so forth. This is where we are heading. This is our direction right now. Um, in order to achieve this, in order to get to the, to this next uh, next level, we need uh, to expand our knowledge. Of, um, of programming. We need to learn some new tools. Uh, one of these tools I want to tackle today, this is going to be uh, an episode about uh, loops, especially the for next loop. That's something we're going to tackle today. However, um, I don't want to like do the for next loop and already start in doing the complicated stuff like, like enemies and so forth. Um, I want to pick something, uh, pick a topic, pick a feature that we can like that's kind of easy going, that's not quite as stressful, that's not quite as complicated, you know, something that we can just like easy implement and understand this new feature. And then we're gonna take this feature and apply it to something more, you know, uh, substantial, right? So the thing that we're gonna deal today is not gonna be quite as, you know, pressing of a thing to do right now. It's not necessarily the thing I would do if I would make the game, but it will teach us the skills to get there, you know, to get to those good stuff. Good. So today I want to do a little bit um, UI work. I want to just put some displays on the screen because you know in in every shmup you have kind of like a display of your like like of your life, right? Um, and then you have maybe have a score and so forth. And this allows us also to talk about. And that's going to be the second goal today. Second goal. Uh, I want to drop some mad truths about variables. We had variables, we've dealt with variables, we manip manipulated them, uh, but now it's time to kind of like lay down some groundwork and kind of like solidify our understanding of, of variables. Two to topics today, let's go. All right, all right. So um, drawing something on the screen, drawing UI on the screen is not gonna be quite as difficult for now. Let's start with something like a score. Um, so we have the draw function here where everything is drawn to the screen. And then uh, we want to draw obviously the UI on top of everything. So it's going to be the last thing that we're going to draw. This is kind of like a bit, maybe a bit unintuitive, but yeah, you draw everything from kind of like from the background to the foreground and the foreground is going to be the last thing you're going to draw. Um, so let's just do a print statement. Let's just print a bogus score, something like score uh, 30,000, something like this, right? And let's print this uh, on the top of the screen. Uh, and I want to maybe it's on the top in the center. That's kind of like quite often where the where the score is. Um, so let's try something. I don't know. I haven't tried it. I, this is this is just like me uh, spitballing. Let's do it like in this blue, beautiful blue color, twelve. Um, so x coordinate is thirty. Y coordinate is y. I don't want to like touch the edge of the screen. I want to be like a little bit removed from that. And the color is going to be twelve. Let's try that. Okay, this is good, this is good. Now I wanna maybe move it a little bit to the side. Let's try 40. That's good, that seems like a good score thing. Okay. Good. Now, the thing is with a score, we probably want to have the score in a variable, right? We the, Again, it's the same thing as I always said. Every time there's a, we have to add a new, new feature, there's probably gonna be a variable involved. So let's just create a score variable, score. And let us just put a number in here, uh, 30,000, yeah, sure. And then uh, let us draw this score to the screen. Now you will immediately notice here a bit of a problem here, like do we have score 
Um, but we actually written it as, as, a, as a text. We're going to plug in the variable in here. I'm going to plug just the score variable. And now we don't longer have the score text, right? We don't have the, the text that, that's, that spells out score. Hmm. So maybe we want to maybe add the text somehow to the number. How are we going to do that? Well, now we have to discuss, you know, what are the things that belong in variables and how can we deal with them? I want to use score, the variable score here, as a bit of a laboratory. We're going to experiment a little bit with, uh, with variables and kind of like un gain a slightly better understanding of, of what are the things that we're putting inside the variables, okay? I already, already said, you know, we, the blue stuff is the thing that goes in the variables. And so far, most of the time, I mean, they look of, uh, at the variables that we created here. Most of the variables that we so far created were, um, were numbers. We just put numbers. And so this is the first thing, the first type of the information that we can put into variables, numbers. An example of this is score equals, you know, 30,000, that's the thing that we had here, uh, up here, here. The thing about numbers that you should know is that, first of all, we can have comma numbers. So we can have, you know, 30,000 comma five, right? That, that, that's possible, you can do that, that that's, that's fine. And of course, you can do math with numbers. That's also in incredible. So you can add five to this, this thing, right? You can have like a little, little math happening here and you can put the result into a variable. Run this, yes, and this is, this is good, this is good. Uh, we can divide it by five, look what happens there. Ooh, interesting, good. Something that is a bit problematic is that uh, there is an upper limit of how big of a number we can put in a variable. That is kind of crazy and, and that's kind of very specific to pico8 and I want to for you to know about this. So let's put 40,000 in a variable and suddenly, wait, that's not the one number we tried. We, it should be 40,000, but it prints, the number that it prints on top of the screen is minus 25,000. How, how does that, wh what happened here? <laughs> Something got lost in the translation, right? Well, there is an upper bound. There is a higher, the highest possible number that you can put in a variable. And if you try to put a num variable inside that is bigger than that highest possible number, then uh, the variable ends up remembering a different number. Uh, it kind of like overflows and goes back into negative and <laughs> it goes up again. The biggest number that you can put in a variable is 32,767. That's the biggest number that you can put in the variable. Let's run this. Indeed, it is still in the variable if you run this. Now, if you add one, alas, it turns negative. It flips into negative. And now from then on, if we still add more stuff, the negative number becomes kind of big, like, like, less negative. <laughs> so it, it goes towards zero, right? Like it, you can still add more stuff. So, it, but it becomes like a, a a lower negative number or higher negative. It's difficult to talk about negative numbers. I, I realize because, like, th th yeah, the numeral is bigger, but also it's <laughs> never mind. It goes towards zero as you add things. You add things to this negative number, um, but you cannot uh, save a number that is bigger than thirty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-seven in a variable. Of course, you also this is also true of negative. You cannot say save, save a number that is smaller than thirty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-seven. That's kind of like a, a limitation of Pico 8 and you have to be mindful of this. You actually, I find myself hitting this limit quite often. There are workarounds around this. And of course, this is very important when we're talking about the score, because especially for shmups, the scores are crazy. Like you have millions, right? 32,000 is kind of not a lot. So yeah, if you want to have a, like a proper shmup, you have to kind of think about how to get around this, uh, this problem. One possible solution, for example, is just do something very cheap, like uh, adding zeros. <laughs> I just make the number feel bigger. <laughs> just add some zeros. Um, yeah, we're gonna think about that. We're gonna uh, burn that bridge when we, when we cross that bridge. Right, so um, the first thing that we can put into a variable are numbers. But we've already seen, there's also a different thing that you can put in the variables and that is gonna be text, right? You can uh, go score equals, uh, I, yeah. Boy, <laughs> I, 
I don't know what this is, something like, like this, right? Okay, let's run this. And you can see we put this text into a variable and we can, we can um, uh, draw this text out. Uh, important thing about text usually is that it is enclosed in quotations. So Pico8 doesn't try to execute, the, doesn't think that this is some kind of instruction or something like this, doesn't even, like it, it just like, ah, okay, it's in quotation. I'm not gonna bother about this. I'm just gonna, you know, take it, take, take this, block and just put it in a variable and not going to try to execute this or interpret this. It's not, not some kind of command or function. It's just like, uh, it, it's, it's a text that I'm putting in a variable. Also something that's a bit weird, you can put a number in a text um, and and that number can be also bigger than the 32,000. You can put like a huge number in, in, in the text and you can run this and yeah, it's no problem. So this could be a way to get a little bit around the um, uh, the limitation that you have with the, with the numbers. By the way, I'm talking about text, but the technical uh, term for for this, for, for the quotation and then some text in, in there, that's actually not text, it's string. And that's something we should remember. I will use the word string from now on because this is something I'm familiar with. And this is also something that you see in a lot of other programming languages. It's a string of characters. Okay, so something that we have to keep in mind is that you can't really do math with, with strings, right? If you have score uh, equals text, uh, we cannot add one to text, right? That doesn't really work. You get an error message and that's kind of like, ooh. But Pico 8 is kind of a little bit lenient about this and I kind of like this about Pico 8. So if you have a string and in this string is some number, like say 45, right? And I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna take the text 45 and I'm gonna add one to it. It kind of works. It kind of works. It's see, you see it's 46. Because Pico8 uh, looks at the string and, try, and tries to add one to it and realize, oh no, it's, my Dofus programmer is trying to add a one to a string. Ugh. Doesn't he know that 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 this is this is a string? Ah, but then Pico8 does like a check. Wait a minute. Let's look at the string. Oh, there's a number in the string. Well, maybe I'm just gonna you know close an eye here <laughs> and let this slide. You know, and I'm just gonna okay. Probably they meant they want to convert this to a number and then then you know so forth. So. So it lets us, um, you know, do math with uh, numbers that are in strings. That's kind of nice. Now you might be thinking like, oh, is this a way maybe to get around the limitations? Can we, can we just add like a huge, this huge number that, that barely fits into the normal variable and add one to it and then get around the limitations like this? Nah, nah, it, do it doesn't work like this. Basically what the Pico8 automatically does, it converts the string into a number and then does the math. And then if the number is too big, then it overflows and turns so forth. So no, it's not, it's not a way to get around this. Um, you might be like thinking, okay, so I cannot add a number to it to a string. Like I cannot, like if I do this, it's it flips out. Uh, but can I maybe combine two texts, like something like texts, like uh, you know, Mar Marco plus Polo, right? Something like this uh, doesn't work. And there's some programming managers where it actually works. It doesn't work in this case because you know this symbol is reserved for math for 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 numbers, but something you can do, and there's a special symbol for this is a dot dot. The dot dot operator uh, is kind of like, allows us to combine two, two strings with, with each other. That's kind of really cool. I like that. And the cool thing is also the dot dot allows us to combine a string with a, a number. So I can do like Marco 32, run Marco 32, nice. So this would allow us to do something like, you know, as we had saw before, you have score and then you add the, the actual score. And uh, this allow, allows us to, you know, print the score with a label, you know, that this is the score uh, in one go without having have, have to have like two separate uh, print statements. That's kind of like really neat. Good. Let us move on to some, there's two other types of things that you can put in a variable that we kind of encountered, but also kind of didn't encounter. You can also put true in a, a variable. You can also pu put false in a variable. Now this is not the text 
true. This is not a string with the word true. This is actually the meaning of true and false. And this type of, of data <laughs> variable is called a Boolean. Uh, there's a mathematician, famous math math mathematician who came up with some rules of Boolean math. And, and uh, so yeah, there's, there, they called the variable after him or the variable type. So yeah, there's some variables that are just true or false. Uh, we had this a little bit in the if statements, right? We have if, uh, you know, something, something, then, well, the something could be a variable, for example, that contains true or false. We haven't encountered this kind of situation and we, I'm gonna um, you know, do a callback on to this when we encounter a situation. Uh, we did have the BTN, right, BTN zero. In this case, the BTN function returned true or false, like it actually returned the variable value true or false. Um, just like to set you up a little bit to kind of like give you an understanding of what, what was happening behind the scenes. You don't have to, like if this sounds alien to you right now, that's okay, we haven't dealt with this yet. I'm just gonna like giving you, like listing you all of the possibilities right now. So um, so when we encounter them later, we can, we can do, we are not too surprised, right? And there's a one last thing that we also kind of encountered, um, which is um, score, ah, by, by the way, I, I did a mistake here. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, do we, if we run this, can we run, can, yeah, it, it actually does print false and true on uh, when we print it with a print statement. So you can't print true or false, it actually prints the actual word true or false. Right, so the final thing that you can put in a variable and it's kind of like a special thing, is just nil. You can just put nil in the variable and that's special. We already encountered this a little bit. Uh, nil is kind of when the variable is empty and I don't mean zero. Zero is a number. That's actually a number and can be very meaningful if something is zero or not. Nil is less than zero to some extent. Like it's, it's even more empty than zero. It's just like nothing. It's just like a blank slate, right? All variables usually start with nil in them. Um, and you know, usually when we define the variable, we assign them some value so they're no longer nil. Generally, it's not a good idea if a variable is nil. You know, that means that something maybe went wrong, because you usually what you do is then you go do like nil plus five. You do some kind of math, right? And then there's a kind of error, right? This is kind of like an error measure that you often see. If you fail to define a variable, then it assume it creates a variable, but the variable is nil, and then it tries to do math with the variable, and then you know, all, all kinds of hell breaks loose. Uh, but yeah, just I want just you to um, be more familiar with the concept of nil, with this, this keyword nil, that can be also inside a variable. It just means the variable is empty. Numbers, strings, booleans, and nils. Four things that you can put in a variable, uh, four like basic variable types in, in Pico8. Later on, we are going to learn about more other things that you can put in variables, there's, it's, that's not, not the end of it. There is some more that we can do, but for now, these shall suffice. So for now, for the beginning, I'm actually gonna start with, uh, with just a simple score. Uh, let me just start with um, 10,000 in the, in the score value. I mean, we would usually would start a game with zero, but just, I'm gonna see a big number so we can kind of like um, see what the UI will look like. And then when we're printing, I'm actually gonna do like, so the score actually uh, has the number of the score so we can do math with it. But when we're printing, uh, we are going to use this thing that we'd used previously where you have a little equation, little, little math happening inside the function call, right? So uh, we can actually use this new operator that we just saw where we can combine text uh, and we're just are gonna write down score, uh, colon and then close quotation and dot dot to combine it with a variable score. So we have the text score and we combine this with a variable score which automatically gets converted into a text and so we can, we can print perfect our score with the text uh, with the actual number of the score, uh, but it's all in one print statement. I mean we could have also done like two prints, print statements, but you know that's that's a lot of work. <laughs> Let us talk about um, uh, loops. So um, a loop, uh, something I wanna draw 
is um, like just a, a task I want to give to myself is I want to draw a bunch of hearts. Um, I mean, usually hearts are not the thing that you do in, in shmups. Usually it's kind of like this, the ships that you see in the sides, but whatever. I, I want to show the lives that you still have. And in a lot of games, it's a heart. So I'm going to actually draw a little heart, a little, little, little sprite. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe these are a bit too big. I don't know if this is a bit too big. Uh, it's it's kind of difficult to draw a sprite sometimes, uh, a heart, I mean, in Pico 8. Um, I want to draw an empty heart and a full heart. Um, so we kind of differentiate between the two a little bit. Okay, that seems good. I mean, it doesn't have to be the most prettiest heart. I don't want to have too much details. This shouldn't distract. I think this is good. This is good enough. Good. So I want to have like, let's say three hearts in a corner. And if I get hit, I want, um, you know, to lose a heart. So let us draw the, the hearts. Let us draw the first heart. Uh, this is going to be the uh, 13, sprite 13. Uh, I'm going to draw it in like one, one, just uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the corner. And that's it. If, does that work? That works. We have one heart. Now, the problem is we're going to copy this and you can see it's already repeating. It's repeat. It's not cool. I, I don't, hmm, I don't like how we have to repeat this. Uh, that's bad. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to emotionalize the, the entire thing, right? Okay. They, they have three hearts now. They're kind of like melding with each other. So maybe we have to actually add some spacing here. Uh, like something like this. Now there's nice spacing between the hearts. All cool and good, but alas, it should be an indicator, right? Hmm. So I guess we need like a, 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 what we call it, a variable. <laughs> That's right, a variable uh, that that has like the life's number, right? Like life's three, right? And now, man, how are we going to do this, right? Because we have sprites, and then depending on how much, how many lives you have like the individual sprites should be either 13 or 14, right? Because sometimes it's for like, if you lose one heart, then the first sprite should be 14 instead of 13. So you might, you might do like an if statement here, but then there's like, you know, three if statements and six, six sprite statements. That's crazy, right? Like it's, that's a lot of code for something that's kind of simple, right? <laughs> And what if we, at some point, we decide that we want to have like five lives? Right? Like, what if we co collect more lives? I, I, oh man, this is this is getting like out of hand for something like for some easy UI. This should be a lesson for you in one in one regard. <laughs> UI is actually super difficult to program. That's something that a lot of people who are new to video game development <laughs> kind of like are surprised by. Yeah, UI is 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 the most difficult thing to do because it's very tedious and, and, and it involves a lot of details and, and there's a lot of writing and, and there's a lot of things that can go wrong, a lot of like special cases that you have to cover. Ah, it's, and you don't think about it. It's just like, it's like an air you breathe, you know, it's kind of really funny. This is a bit of a problem. Uh, how can we simplify things? Well, uh, loops to the rescue. So yeah, you probably can already tell from the name, a loop is something where we say this piece of code, I want to repeat it x times. I want to just do it a couple of times. Uh, it's always the same thing, but uh, but I want to repeat this. And a very famous and very, I personally, in my favorite kind of loops is just the humble for next loop. I, I, lo I know it as for next loop because I grew up with uh, basic as programming language and, and there it was for next. Uh, here in Lua, it's just for loop. Okay, we're going to write for, and you can already see, okay, this is turning pink. That's good. I equals one comma three do. And then we're going to do and whoa, <laughs> that's, that's some, that's not the if statement was nice. It was kind of like this, you know, it was almost English language. This is not, in, this is weird, weird language. So let me, let me break it down. It's, it's, it seems a bit impenetrable, but actually it's really, really nice. So, the for next loop, uh, the for loop here, allows us to repeat what's inside the loop uh, multiple times. In this case, we are going to do this three times. <laughs> I, 
I've been living in China too long. I cannot do any <laughs> science and because Chinese, like you're one, two, three, four, five, but then when you get to six days, con continue doing things on the same hand and I, I cannot show numbers anymore. I just don't know how they work anymore with my hands. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah. Uh, back to the topic. So in this loop will uh, loop uh, three times. Uh, I'm going to put some sprite in, in it so we can maybe see some results. Oh, oh let, actually, no, let's not do a sprite. Let's just um, do a print. Let us do a print and go hello. Uh, let's run this. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> see? You, oh, that's, that's a good lesson here. So <laughs> I made a mistake. I'm, uh, there's nil, nil, nil there. We already had nil just before. The problem is here that I not did not I don't not printing uh, the text hello. I'm printing a variable that I just invented called hello, and we haven't assigned any value to that variable. And so Pico8 just created a variable for us, and a new variable always has nil in it. So we're printing <laughs> nil three times. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn this into a string, and then I'm gonna run this, and you can see three times hello is being printed. Perfect. So we can see that uh, whatever was inside this loop was repeated three times. So we have four. Um, each for loop has a counter variable. There is like a little variable that comes with each loop and it kind of like kind of only, only works for within within the confines of this loop. We're going to talk about this, this kind of like weird special type of like mini variable and this variable um, counts how many times the loop has been going. Okay, in this case, um, we can actually give any name to our variable. We can call this Bob. That's fine. It will still work. I is a very popular name for these kind of counter variables. Uh, says index, I guess, or counter. I don't know. I. Let's just let's keep it at with I. It's a very popular thing that you will see all over again. So okay, fine. I then equals um, one. This is the the first time the loop goes through, that's going to be the starting value of i. We're going to start counting at one. Then we have a comma and then three is the final value of i. It will basically we're going to repeat the loop counting i up by one until i reaches three. So in the first loop, i is going to be at the starting value one. Blam, we are printing hello. On a second loop, we're going to add one to i, which is going to be two now, and we're going to do the loop, print hello, okay. And on the third loop, we're going to add one more to i, which is now going to be three. This is, go this is the, f the, the flag that we set, like now the loop is over, so we're going to run it one last time, printing a third hello, and the loop is going to be finished. Okay, so for example, if I now put six in here, you will see six hellos. Why such a complicated thing? Why can't we just have like, you know, repeat the six time, you know? Why do we have to start a starting value? Why do we have a variable for this, you know? The reason for this is that we can actually use i inside the loop. So it's not exactly the same thing that's being executed. So things are changing around things a, a little bit. And that's kind of like really neat. For example, let's just print i. Instead of hello, let's just print i. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. It prints actually the value of i as the, the code is repeated. And that's incredibly useful uh, to do all sorts of funny and, and good shenanigans. I just also wanted to show you that you can have a different starting value for i. So you can start like with three, for example, and you can see three, four, five, six. So now uh, the loop has been actually repeated four times because we are starting with three. That's something that, that, that you can do. And if you're not really, really fancy, sometimes it requires, you know, you really have to do it. You can do it. You don't have to add one for every loop. You can change things around. Special type of loop, basically. You can, for example, go backwards. So let's start with six and go to all the way down to one. But this requires us to kind of like add a comma minus one. And so the third entry here after the third comma, which is optional, you don't have to supply it. If you don't supply it, it will assume you want to add one. But if you uh, add a third value here, it will you know, add that value on every loop. So now we have the value minus one, which means we're counting down 
from six down to one. Right? Six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Good. What happens if if we start with six, go to one, but 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 we count up? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what happens. Okay. It just it just realizes. Wait a minute. This this, this not this not gonna work and just skips the entire loop. It doesn't even throw an error message. Kind of I kind of like it. I kind of like it. It's very classy. Very classy. But also something to watch out for. Now in most cases we're gonna start with one and we're gonna count out to some numbers. Usually you will see the four next loops like this. Those fancy four next loops are you know for really experimental stuff. How does that help us though? So again, we are want to print some hearts on the screen. How is this gonna be useful for us? Well, we're gonna print the hearts using the for next loop. Uh, we want to print three hearts. So starting at one, going to three. And now we can put the sprite statement inside here, right? So we're just gonna print a single heart. We're gonna run this. Well, it's the same heart printed three times on top of each other. That's not exactly what we were going for. We want to kind of, uh, we want to spread them apart, as we said, right? Well, we can use the I for this. That's useful. So you can do something like uh, I times eight, nine. Ta-da! So now you can see, you know, the, the first time you print the heart, I is gonna be one. I is gonna be one, right? The first time we're gonna go through this loop. So we're gonna take I uh, multiplied by nine, and that's where we're gonna print the first heart. The second time we're going through this loop, I is gonna be two. So we're gonna uh, multiply the two with a nine, we're gonna get an 18, and that's where we're gonna print the second heart. And the third time we're going to print, go through this loop, i is going to be 3. We're going to take the 3, multiply it by 9. That's going to be 27. 27. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not good with math. And that's where we're going to print the, the uh, third heart. So as you can see, this, these counter variables for the, th for the four loops are not just, you know, to just count how many times a, a loop goes through. We can actually use them within the loop to change things around to create really, really cool things. And now you can see how easy it is because we can just go like, oh, we want to have four lives in our game. No problem. Just going to loop, loop more. Uh, the, the hearts are not quite starting at the left edge of the screen how it was previously, so we have to kind of like maybe do something like this. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Or if, hey, we want to have 10 hearts? No problem. You can have as many hearts. And also, this is this also maybe something I wanted to, to discuss. Uh, I'm, uh, let, me, let me remove this. This is different. This loop is different from, you know, like the draw function or uh, the update function. I saw the draw function update function is called 30 times per second. That's a lot slower than the for next loop. The for next loop is instant. There is no waiting time here. You cannot use the for next loop to do like a, I know, animation. Usually there's, there's tricks around this, but we're gonna come to that later. Uh, th things inside the loop are instantly executed. You don't see it <laughs> and you can push this really, really hard. I'm gonna draw 99 hearts. No problem. Game still runs fluently. I'm gonna draw 32,000 hearts. No problem. Oh, okay, no, it. <laughs> okay, now it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, uh, let, let's see what the limit is. 10,000 hearts. Oh, 10,000 hearts still is, 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 is fine. 10,000 hearts. Can you imagine? Uh, and you can see that the, 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 like it goes off screen and then actually the variable overflows and <laughs> it goes back. It's crazy. But I like to say like, this is a way of like touching infinity. This is kind of like the real power of um, programming to some extent. It allows you to automate things, right? To do things that uh, manually you wouldn't be able to do before. Uh, like drawing 10,000 hearts. Like it's, <laughs> it would be kind of like really annoying. Like even if, do, if you do it by code, right? But just like a couple of, of, of uh, lines of code to add a loop and then, you know, you just can use a number to repeat a task an insane amount of time. And this is the real 
to some extent the real uh, power of programming, I feel. All right, so uh, let's draw four hearts for now. Let's just say four hearts, okay? Mm, let's bring about back the score. But now we said uh, the problem was also like, how do we make that some hearts will appear empty depending on, uh, you know, the variable life. Should we call it life or lives? Maybe life. Li let's call it lives. Is it lives or lives? Lives, right? English language is not my first language. Okay. So here you can do something like if lives is greater than, so hmm, we have to think about this now. Okay. Uh, let's just go like if lives is greater than I then print a sprite. Okay, now we have two hearts. Let's just, let's just think this through, all right? So we print the first heart. Now, lives is actually three, just to, do, to remind us. Lives equals three, right? If we put it to four, okay, we see more hearts. So increasing lives will actually put more hearts on it. I actually have to think, I didn't code it before. I have to actually think through myself. This is how I would do it. This is genuine now. Okay, future Christian here. So um, past Christian did figure this out, but uh, I thought I'm going to give it another try. That is a little bit more clear for you guys. Um, so uh, yeah, the problem, to restate the problem here, we have um, a variable called lives and it, it has a number in it, in this case four, but the number of hearts that we're drawing it does not correspond to the number of lives we have. It's always one less. So when we have four lives, we have uh, three hearts and we have three lives and we have just two hearts. So what we want to do now is we want to step through the different loops that we're doing here. We want to, you know, keep track of the different values and things that are happening uh, to kind of track down what is happening and what the problem is and how we can fix this. I'm going to do something new here, actually. I'm going to do a, uh, a comment block. Uh, we've seen how you can comment an individual line out so it turns gray, so it's just like a note for you. But you can actually code out a, a whole bunch of lines at the same time. You have to do like a square brackets, two square brackets after each other. And that may, you know, turns like a whole block of text into a comment, and but you have to close it like this again. Uh, so we're going to use this feature to kind of like have a little, have a little note, have a little table of the different different loops. So we're going to count the loops. Uh, we're going to write down what i is. It's kind of obvious, but we're going to still write it down just in case. Uh, we're going to have the if statement, what the if statement is. And we're going to write down if the heart is being drawn. Okay, so we have loop one, two, three, four. There's four loops from one to four, right? So we're going to write down what is happening on each given loop. Right, so on the first loop with i is one, and the if statement here that we're checking here, now that is three greater than one. Three greater than one is true. So we are going to get a heart drawn. So the inside of the if statement is being executed. We are getting get a heart on the screen. That's good. On the second loop, i is going to be two. And the if statement here is going to be three greater than two. Uh, that's true. So we're going to still have a heart. That's good. On the third loop, i is going to be three. And you can already maybe see where this is going. Uh, the if statement is three greater than three. Now, this is a bit of an edge case, right? Like, okay, three is not greater than three. Three is actually equal three. So this is actually false. This statement is false. Three is not e greater than three. It's not true. Three is just not greater than three. So we have to say we have no heart. The, uh, this if statement is skipped. The heart is not being drawn. No heart. And that's bad. We want to have the third heart and uh, this wasn't covered. Okay, but let's continue on. So on the fourth loop, i uh, is going to be four and the statement is going to be three equals uh, three greater than four. Uh, that's also wrong. Three is not greater than four. Actually, it's the opposite. So again, we have no heart, but this time it's okay. This time it's fine. We, want, we don't want to have four hearts. We just want to have three hearts. So as you can see, this is the problem here, the, this, the third loop where uh, i is 3. That's the problem that we have to address here now. And so I'm going to uh, move back to a past Christian who will show you a cool trick on how to solve this problem. So this is actually a good moment to introduce you to a new 
uh, operator to compare to variables. That is kind of uh, nice. So this is greater or equal. Greater or equal. So it's greater, the actual greater sign, and afterwards there's the equal sign. Ta-da! So now we see three hearts. That's exactly how many uh, lives we have in our variable. And if we set it to two, we see just two hearts. If we set it to one, we see one heart. If we set it to zero, we see zero hearts. Sometimes, you know, figuring out this algorithm requires you to kind of like, you know, go through the code and, 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 and do some, like, just actually follow what will happen when you do things. Also, just like fumbling around, you know, just like poking you know, and, and doing things. Um, yeah, greater or, or equal. If uh, this statement is true, if lives is greater or equal i. You can also have it smaller than equal. That's also a valid operator, smaller or equal. Okay. And of course, remember, if you want to have lives exactly equal, then it's a double equal sign. You can do that as well. <laughs> okay. Greater than equal. That's the, the correct one. But we want to print, like um, right now we have three hearts, but we have the empty hearts, right? We want to see like the, the, the hearts that, that we lost, right? That, that, that we no longer have. How are we going to do this? Uh, there is an extension, there is a uh, mod, so to speak, to the if statement that I also kind of want to use at this point, uh, which is else. If something is true, then execute this thing. And instead of and, you can say else. And that opens a new block and that you can close with end. And now we, in here, we can draw the empty heart. That's gonna be this 40. If lives is a greater or equal i, then you draw the full heart. But if lives is not greater or equal i, then you draw this thing instead. Else allows us to catch all the situations where, you know, the switch statement is kind of like this, this if some, when this is true, uh, when that is actually false. This allows us to capture all of the opposite statements, basically. And that's kind of really nice and very useful. Uh, yeah, and so this is what we wanted. Now you see the empty hearts, and if lives go down to one, you will see that there's just one heart, but you can see still the, the, the empty hearts. Something I also wanted to show you is that the i variable only exists kind of like within this block, this little block. If we print the i variable here outside the block, print i, it's nil. You see, there's nil. It's weird, right? Because we print it inside the, the loop, it's fine, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four. And you expect the, the, the variable to maybe to remember the four after the, after the, uh, the loop, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't remember it. The, the variable completely disappears. It's kind of like uh, we enter this little parallel universe a little bit, uh, and the I is kind of like only useful within this, this parallel universe. This is what we call a local variable, a uh, type of variable that is only exists in a, in a limited realm and it kind of evaporates once that realm is, is, is uh, and once we leave that realm, that kind of like disappears. And this is kind of very useful not to have like a lot of variables in your program that trash the memory or, you know, like just like all, when, when there's like all these little loops and they all create a new variable and that variable just stays there after the loop is finished, you will get like, you would fill the memory of, of your computer with, with all these trash variables. And in order to be really clean and, and, and tidy about these things, we have these variables that are just like, but only there for a very specific purpose and disappear after that purpose is gone. We're gonna look at local variables later on. All right, this is it. Now we are going to move on to the doggy zone. Mm. That's right, the doggy zone. This was a very theory heavy episode, so I'm not gonna um, give you too much of a homework this time around, but I will give you one assignment, which is gonna be pretty easy, I would say, which is, we ha uh, there's another thing that you sometimes have in, in uh, shmups, which is bombs, like a bomb display. So I want you to create a bomb sprite and maybe like a used up bomb sprite, I don't know. And then repeat this, this kind of like loop. I want you to create a, your own loop 
uh, but this time I want it to be on the right side, you know, after the score, on the right side of the score. I want to put a, a, a bump display there, just like to, to have more experience yourself with the loop. And of course, this is also the part where I will give a big shout out to my coffee crew. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the general support of my supporters on Coffee. Thank you so much for your support. And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a one-time donation over at Coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll gain access to new episodes of this series earlier, so there is no need to wait. And there's also all sorts of other behind-the-scenes features. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. That's right. Okay, so now we have learned about the uh, the four next loops. This is really good. Maybe next time around we're gonna learn about lists. Let's see about that. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.